Morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to the Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare, healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you or a loved one has a health challenge you would like help dealing with nutritionally, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. And if you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, we love hearing from you. 844-236-6010. Let's make this show participatory. If you have an opinion about something, I'd love to hear it. Health and nutrition-wise. 844-236-6010. If you have ideas about ingredients or questions about formulations you may have heard about, read about, we'd like to hear from you. 844-236-6010. And we especially like hearing from you if you have a success story you'd like to share. 844 844- 236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products, or even better, if you want to sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team for a one-time $25 fee, please call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. You can also click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, and you can purchase all your favorite Longevity products off the websites as well, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. And don't forget, don't forget to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com or Truth Biomimetic Mineral Mist, Truth Retinol 1% and 5% gels, our Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream are all up at truthtreatments.com. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, silicon oil, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Treatments. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. We've been talking about fats, the three major f dietary fats, or the three major fats in the body, cholesterol, phospholipids, and the triglycerides. Cholesterol is the most, well, they're all fascinating, but cholesterol, because it's just so, it's so, such a part of the, nat the, the national and cultural languaging, or at least around health and medicine and diet. Everybody, taught, everybody pretty much has heard about cholesterol, although we're never told exactly what it, what it is about cholesterol. Yesterday I read the, a little bit from a really cool paper, a research paper. What's so special about cholesterol? It is indeed very, very special stuff, which is uh, it's just it highlights, it highlights the unfortunate nature of our national discussion about this magical biomolecule, cholesterol. Most people just think of a bad guy. Most people just think of lowering cholesterol. I was reading yesterday an article that talked about how they want to use genetics to low, force the body, to compel the body from a genetic standpoint to not make as much cholesterol. That's the newest strategy, to, uh, or one of the newest strategies to lower cholesterol levels. They'll actually target the cholesterol-making cells with drugs and even high-tech drugs now. You have this repatha. All in the name of lowering cholesterol, because of this outdated and biologically ignorant idea that shutting down cholesterol production can somehow be beneficial for your heart. It's not true. We gotta get that out of our heads. Cholesterol is vital stuff for a lot of different reasons. In this, in this article yesterday, we talked about the membrane, the role, uh, cholesterol's role in the membranes. It, 
the cholesterol can store electrons and release electrons. The membrane can store electrons and, and release electrons. And this storage and release and storage and release and storage and release is really how the membrane becomes the brain. This is kind of a way information is conducted. Information is uh, uh, directed to the nucleus, to the cell. The inside of a cell listens to the flow of electrical energy that's coming through the cholesterol and through the membrane. The flow of electrical energy is a type of information. One of my favorite lines in the paper, lipids and membranes are coming back on the scene as a key research area. There is a tremendous need for knowledge about the ways in which lipids are involved in various stages of cell function. By lipids, we mean cholesterol, the triglycerides, and the phospholipids. And this is something we talk about all the time. Eat your fats. Eat fat. Make sure you help your body process fats. It's not just eating fat. It's making sure your body can process the fat. Fats, fats, fats. They are so critical and significant when it comes to our health. There are growth in our stress, molecule, uh, our stress management molecules. They help us manage life, deal with life. Cholesterol plays a major role in, in how we deal with life. It's a stress management molecule. A cell is only as healthy as uh, the fatty membrane. The, the, a cell is only going to be as healthy as its fats, as its cholesterol and its phospholipids, and uh, its triglycerides. Oh, and by the way, there are subcellular membranes too. And those help direct energy flow. This is all getting into those tiniest, tiniest, tiniest levels. I'm telling you, the, the nature of a cell is just so unbelievable. You look at it, and it just looks like a little blob. But it's composed, we say inside, but it's really like they're embedded. All of these, literally millions, literally millions of substructures that have their own organization, their own structure. It's unbelievable. And it's all directed by the fatty nature. The fatty nature surrounds the water. That's the point of the fats. It surrounds the water. And the water is under the, uh, under the control of the fats. The fats are primary. The water is secondary. The watery nature follows the fatty nature. Work on your fats. This is why one of the major aspects for dealing with chronic disease all of which contain an element of an inability to handle stress and duress and deal with life. One of the major aspects of, a, of dealing with multiple sclerosis and uh, lupus and hypothyroidism and skin diseases, and you name it, cardiovascular disease, is to make sure you're dealing with your fat metabolism, using probiotics, using fiber, making sure you're eating your, uh, you're, using, you're taking your ultimate EFAs, making sure you're getting your digestive enzymes. And don't forget your fatty minerals, selenium and zinc in particular, stand out. Cells are little bags of water surrounded by fats. The fats allow the water to enter into the cell selectively. This ring of fats, which we call the cell membrane, is responsible for how the cell responds to the environment. The membrane is the central control point of active cell activity. That's what Bruce Lipton is always talking about. That's what, you know, it's amazing to me, Bruce Lipton. He's, he's a really, really good biologist, an amazing scientist. But somehow he is, his ideas have gotten into the, into the culture. Non-scientists all, un, all understand Bruce Lipton, or, or there's a lot of non-scientists who love Bruce Lipton's work. Why is it that Bruce Lipton has become so popular? Because he's taken this complex idea of cell biology and, and biochemistry and reduced it into something that we can understand. And what he talks about is he talks about how f fundamental that membrane is to health. And one of the coolest things he talks about is how the, member, the nucleus, the genetics, is responsive to the membrane. This is one of Bruce Lipton's primary ideas. The, the genetics is responsive to the membrane. Where'd you hear that before? It's called epigenetics. Dr. Wallach's been talking about it for decades. I learned about epigenetics in pharmacy school in 1985. We learned about epigenetics, yet we still have the medical model and the vast majority of people obsessed with the idea of, of controlling genetics or of the notion that genetics is in charge of everything. No, the membrane talks to the genetics. The genetics is responsive to the membrane. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. That just means it's responsive to the cholesterol, it's responsive to the triglycerides, at least partially anyway, and responsive to the phospholipids. All right, we'll be back with more good health information. 844-236-6010 is... Okay, we 
are back on The Bright Side, and thank you for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at BenFuchsArchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that up. That's a really cool website, BenFuchsArchives.com. And then uh, also BrightSideBen.com. We have search engines up at both websites, and you can search particular programs or particular topics if you like. You can also purchase longevity products off of brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team as well if you're a health-minded person, if you're, uh, if you're interested in helping people at the most fundamental level there is, and that is the level of good health and wellness using nutritional supplements. If you've noticed and benefited, uh, noticed results and benefited from getting on a uh, nutritional supplement program and you want to help spread the word, Love to have you on the Bright Side Ben team. Call 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can be in business for yourself. Earn thank you checks associated with having your own business, and you can get your products at the wholesale price. Call 866-735-2470 for more information, or click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, so we're talking fats. Fat absorption, fat metabolism, fat intake, this idea that we have to avoid fatty foods. It's not as prevalent as it was maybe 20 years ago. I remember in the early 1990s, people were obsessed with with uh, uh, avoiding fat and low fat. And I just knew intuitively, but I also knew from pharmacy school how important fats were. Now you're getting uh, the pendulum is swinging the other way, seemingly. That's how it happens sometimes in, in, when nutrition becomes a meme, when nutritional ideas and scientific ideas become uh, a public do- enter into the public domain. They leave the scientific realm and become part of the public uh, discussion. Sometimes you get pendulums, pendulum effects. No fats, low fats. Now everybody's eating fats and going keto. Uh, We've been talking about fats here on this program, and I've been talking about fats, and Dr. Wallach has been talking about fats, and really biochemists who understood, or nutritionists who were biochemists, nutritionists who understood biochemistry have been talking about the importance of fats forever. They have not stopped talking about the importance of fats. Because from a biochemical standpoint, these things are incredible. Absolutely incredible, and one of the major aspects of disease is the inability to process fats in combination with deficiencies. The body, the body is a stress management system. There's always going to be stresses in life. The body is incredibly well equipped to handle stresses. Over the course of billions of years of evolution, cells, which are what bodies are made up of, have developed stress management techniques. And after billions of years, the inability to handle stress or the cells that had, were not able to handle stress have been weeded out. And what's left behind is this incredibly equipped system that can handle stresses. And the stresses are largely the result of the fat, or stress management is largely the result of the fats. And in a cell, it's largely the result of the fat that coats the cell, the membrane. It looks like a little layer of grease sitting atop a blob. If you look at a cell closely under a microscope, it looks like a blob. It is a blob. It's a tiny microscopic blob that has coated with a little layer of oil. So it looks like an oily blob. But when you zoom in on this layer of oil, which is thousands of times thinner than tens of thousands of times thinner, probably maybe 10,000 to 20,000 times thinner than a piece of notebook paper, you zoom in on it. It becomes this incredibly complex structure, a liquid crystal, just like your liquid crystal display on your television set. It's a liquid crystal, which is a a whole other state of matter, liquid crystals. Liquid crystals are, a crystal is just a structured structured substance. That's all crystal is, an organized structured substance. And a liquid crystal, usually crystals are solid that we know of, but a liquid crystal flows. And this liquid crystal is the function of an interaction between sugars and water and fat. That's why sugars are so important, by the way, polysaccharides, so-called, because they're part of this liquid, liquid crystalline structure that keeps the cell healthy. All disease is cell disease, remember, and the cell's health is maintained by this liquid crystal structure and this liquid crystalline structure, and this liquid crystal, crystalline structure is a function of the fats, the water, and the sugar. Fats, water, sugar. Fats, polysaccharides and water and you throw in some minerals in there and there's your body right there 
fats, polysaccharides, water, and minerals. Let's see if I'm missing anything here. Of course, proteins also. Yes, proteins are probably the most important, but the, the, the structure itself, well, the proteins are really important too. So all of those, proteins, sugars, fats, minerals, and water, that's the body. That makes fats really important. The phospholipids, the cholesterol, and the triglycerides. And by the way, there's a, we're talking about the phospholipids, there's an, a, a, they call it a vitamin-like substance called choline. You may have heard of a, acetylcholine. Lecithin is made up of choline. Choline is said to be vitamin-like. It's not really a vitamin because you can get it from, uh, it, you, the body can break it down from other substances like lecithin. So it's not, they don't consider it really a vitamin, but it is essential. You got to get it in the body somehow. The best way to get it is from eggs. The best way to get your choline is by eating fo uh, a lecithin like lecithin substances like uh, you'll find in eggs, soy, wheat germ, pretty much all fatty foods will get you some, some phospholipids and choline. But choline is one of those underappreciated nutrients that is incredibly important when it comes to fat metabolism. They use choline for folks who have Parkinson's disease, choline for people who have um, Alzheimer's disease or dementias, uh, because it's so important for the nervous system, the neurology. Remember, f uh, phospholipids are highly electrical and the neurology depends on them. So eating your eggs is probably the best thing you can do. Again, just another reason why you want to eat lots of eggs. It's on the yolk, by the way, where the cholesterol is. The phospholipids and the choline are found in what I call the cholesterol complex. Cholesterol complex is found in organ meats and also in eggs and dairy. And this cholesterol complex is a complex of cholesterol, vitamin K, lecithin, vitamin D, and, and very important saturated fats. And it's unbelievably powerful uh, in terms of uh, energy. And it's a amazing source of nutrients and it's the 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 one of the major places or one of the uh, most important dietary mistakes that we make as a culture is avoiding these kinds of foods and we're told to avoid those kinds of foods we're told to avoid egg yolks how many people do you know are still eating egg whites and throwing out the yolks that's just plain biochemical ignorance not not the fault of the people it's the fault of the medical model the dr oz is of the world that are saying don't don't eat your egg yolks i don't know if dr oz says that but the medical model itself has been telling people not to eat this cholesterol complex and depriving people of choline and depriving people of lecithin and depriving people of this powerful building stress management dietary substance the cholesterol complex eat your eggs eat your organ meats if you're not a vegetarian eat your soy if you're careful about it not soy oil, by the way. Fermented soy, miso. Best way to get your soy. All right, the third class of fats that we should really, it's one most of us know about. We think, this is one most of us think about when we think of fats. We don't really think of phospholipids when we think of fats. We don't really think of cholesterol when we think of fats. We think of the triglycerides when we think of fats. And that's what most of us are talking about. When we talk about lowering fat or fatty foods. We're talking about triglycerides. Triglycerides float around in the, in the blood, in the lipoproteins. And unlike cholesterol, it's the triglycerides. Those play a really important role when it comes to how healthy our hearts will be. Forget the cholesterol idea, but the triglycerides you got to be a little bit careful of. Uh, and you got to be in control of, we'll say. The triglycerides are also very unstable, and this is where oils uh, get a bad rap because of the instability of the triglycerides. Uh, we talked at the medium chain triglycerides. Hey, we got to take a break. We'll finish up when we come back, and then we'll continue probably next for the next few days talking about the importance of dietary fats. Being censored by okay, we're back on the bright side, and we do have lines open. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. Let's see. If, I want to say a few more things about fats, and we'll get into the triglycerides tomorrow. Uh, we've already talked about the medium chain triglycerides. Um, we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll talk a little about that a little bit tomorrow, and then we'll talk about some of the saturated fats, and, and then we'll get into uh, how this whole fat phobia thing started. Uh, as we continue talking about what I consider to be, um, if not the most important, at least one of the most important aspects, and certainly one of the most misunderstood aspects when it comes to how we handle our health via diet and uh, also via supplements, and that is this idea of fats, fatty vitamins, cholesterol, and phospholipids as we continue our discussion on the bright side basically talking about the liver is where we started talking about this and speaking of the liver there was an article that got my attention here yesterday i also got a text from uh, one of our listeners about this danny who uh, maybe you caught this deaths uh, this is about liver cancer deaths from liver cancer increased 43 percent 43 percent 
That's huge from 2000 to 2016, just in the last 16 years. What the heck is going on? This is from a, 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 a report from the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention's National uh, U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention's National Center for, for Health Statistics. That is a mouthful. Liver cancer rates increase for both men and women, 25 and older, as well as white, black, and Hispanic people. Only Asians and Pacific Islanders saw a decrease in mortality from liver cancer. So what do they attribute this to? Well, a couple different things. They attribute it to hepatitis B and C infection, excess alcohol consumption. And then also, uh, there's one more thing they were attributing this to, opioid, the opioid epidemic. Epidemic. Which is, you know, certainly play a role in toxing out the liver. But the point is, is our livers are toxic because the liver is processing all the toxins. Look at the, you can't possibly have a situation where the fluoride in the water isn't going to have an effect. And the antibiotics in the water aren't going to have an effect. And the chlorine in the water isn't going to have an effect. And all the chemicals in the processed foods and all the air we're breathing. And on top of all of that, all the prescription drugs we're taking. Obviously, our livers are going to be stressed out. Last, uh, the last maybe 20, 25 years, we have this new disease called NAFLD, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. They have to say non-alcoholic to distinguish it from the kind of liver disease you get when you drink alcohol a lot. It's a special kind of liver disease that occurs just like an alcoholic, somebody who's been drinking Jack Daniels or, or, or vodka for the last 25 years on a daily basis, it's the same disease except you're not touching alcohol. Why is that? Because the liver is toxed out. Oh yeah, what about the fructose and all the sugar? Not to mention uh, all the processed fats. And not to mention all the nutritional deficiencies. Of course liver cancer is going to be going up. Deaths from liver cancer, that is. 43%. That is crazy. Speaking of misunderstanding of fats, there's also an article. This is brought from Popular Science Magazine. Came out yesterday. The case for full fat yogurt. Dairy fat may be saturated, but it's not necessarily unhealthy. One recent study brought the issue of this is reading from Popular Science Magazine. One recent study brought the issue of full fat dairy to the headlines last week. Researchers have been zeroing, zeroing in on the health consequences of, da of dietary fat dietary dairy fat for a long time on the whole study show that people who eat full dairy full fat dairy tend to be just as healthy or even healthier than those who choose the low fat options interesting yes there's lots of good fats especially in dairy there's a special fat called CLA that's found in dairy CLA is a, a fat that helps you lose weight every once in a while you read about how eating dairy can help you lose weight well it's the CLA which is a uh, derivative of an EFA derivative of omega-6 EFA at that there's also of course uh, cholesterol in dairy and there's vitamin D in dairy too so I'm not I'm not necessarily a big fan of dairy the way we eat our dairy today but that's not to say that there's not some good stuff in dairy, especially in the fatty component. Eat cholesterol, eat fat, eat fatty vitamins. Don't forget your fatty vitamins, very important. DEEK, vitamins D, E, A, and K, your growth and stress related, stress management related vitamins. D and A, by the way, are said to be vitamins because they're essential. You gotta get them in the diet, vitamin D and A. But what's cool about vitamin D and A, they're hormones. So yeah, they're vitamins because you gotta, they gotta come in from the diet, but they're actually hormones that your body cannot make. That's why they're so important to eat. Either in a supple, either supplementally or through food, or in the case of vitamin D through the sun, these are hormones that the body cannot make. That is a bizarre idea. Hormones are more typically all of them are made by the body, with the exceptions of vitamin A and vitamin D. A hormone differs from a vitamin because a hormone doesn't necessarily help things happen; it makes things happen. A vitamin helps things happen. Things don't happen without vitamins. A hormone makes them happen. A hormone switches them on. A vitamin facilitates the movement and facilitates the biochemistry, but it's the hormone that makes it happen. In fact, the word hormone means I make happen. I arouse to activity, specifically in Greek. Vitamin D and vitamin A are hormones. 
It's, it's uh, very interestingly, we've learned over the last 20 years or so that our fat actually makes hormones. They call them adipokines. And these hormones have tremendous uh, effect on how the, uh, how the body inflames. Fatty hormones are involved in, that were produced in, in body fat are involved in the inflammatory process, which is why people are, who are obese get sick. It's, what do you think this is about the obesity? Aside from the fact that it puts a stress on the heart and the circulatory system, the body fat, more body fat you're carrying, the more inflammation you're going to have because body fat produces inflammatory hormones. That's why losing body fat is so important. Not just losing weight, by the way. It's losing body fat, especially visceral fat around the gut, the kind of fat that accumulates in our, uh, uh, our standard American lifestyle as a result of our standard American diet and standard American lifestyle. We're not also, it happens uniformly, universally, 100% of the time that when Americans, probably around the world too, but definitely Americans reach the age of 30, they start to get body fat. Nobody, do you know anybody, unless they're working out intensely, who has the same kind of body fat levels at the age of 40 or 50 as they did when they were 20 or 30? That's not necessarily supposed to happen. That is the result of our standard American diet, our dependence on grains. Our dependence on grains is what's throwing off our fat. What do farmers give their cattle when they want to make them fat? They don't give them fat. They don't give them coconut oil. They give them grains. They're corn fed, especially corn. Corn being extremely high in uh, sugar. Corn is one of the fastest ways to, get, to gain weight, and, and corn is a national phenomenon. Uh, it is probably the most common grain ingested in this country is corn. And it's one of the worst. It's one of the worst, I say. But there's a, there's a lot of problems, you know, barley, rye, oats, and wheats, the so-called brow grains. If you're carrying too much body fat, guaranteed you're going to be inflaming excessively, and that is one of the major reasons why you want to lose. Probably the major reason, especially if you're a woman, because fat is producing these inflammatory hormones that can exacerbate problems with estrogen. Lose body fat. How do you lose body fat? Well, number one, stop ingesting so much carbs. Number two, start exercising a little bit. And number three, maybe practice a little bit of intermittent fasting or go ketogenic. All right, we'll take your phone calls when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll return right after this on the Bright Side. Back on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got lots of lines open for you. Let's go to Florida and say good morning to Danny. What's up, Danny? How you doing? Are you the Danny that sent me this note, by the way, this text? Uh, no, I'm not. Okay, another Danny. What's going on, Danny? How you doing in Florida? Well, I want to, I want to thank you for your radio show, and I'm really excited about the new product you mentioned on your talk show about H.A., I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm having a hard time. I'm having a hard time hearing you, Danny. A new product called HA. Yeah, it has high, high ammonic acid in it. Danny, I'm sorry. Yes, high aluronic acid is an amazing substance. It's not a new product, though. Um, but I'm having a hard time hearing you. Can you maybe speak up or get me off speakerphone? Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I have you on speakerphone now. I'm in. I'm in my car, and I got you on the speakerphone now. Can you get me off speakerphone? Because I have a hard time hearing you. I'll, I'll try. Okay. Can you let's hear put me the, now? A little bit better. What's going on? I mean, it's, it's, it's I wanted really. To ask you about, I want to ask you about Parkinson's disease. Is okay, there anything you could do to prevent it? Yes, there's lots you can do for Parkinson's disease. Danny, listen, I gotta let you go because it, it's just really we have a horrible connection. You're welcome to call back, but I want to spend some time talking about Parkinson's disease. I, I, I wish I could have, uh, wish I could have talked to Danny, but that was just a terrible connection. If you can listen, if you're listening, Daniel, uh, Danny, call back eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. But I'm gonna talk. That's a, a great topic, Parkinson's disease. 
because obviously it's just a terrible, uh, just a, it's one of, the, one of the worst things that can happen to us as we get older is the inability to move our bodies and our body just doesn't cooperate. Parkinson's disease is marked by shaking and, and vibrating and just move, movements of the head. And it's just a horrible, horrible way to, uh, horrible way to age. And it's really just basically deterioration of the brain. Just reading about Parkinson's, I was just talking about it yesterday, actually, I think on this program, uh, about how they have these old, all these mechanisms that they associate with Parkinson's disease and all these uh, molecular biochemical pathways that go awry when you have Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease. Listen, Parkinson's disease is nothing more than a deterioration of the brain, period. Now, you can get into all the molecular, nat uh, molecular and biochemical phenomena that underlie the deterioration. That's great. And I'm a, I'm a chemistry geek, and I love hearing about that stuff and reading about that stuff. But if you have the illness, it doesn't matter. What matters is, is your brain is rotting. That's what Parkinson's disease is. That's what dementia is. And there's a reason why dementia and Parkinson's disease overlap, because they're basically the same thing. Huntington's Korea, same idea. Huntington's disease. It's, a, it's just a deterioration of the brain. And why does the brain deteriorate? It deteriorates for the same reason any other tissue deteriorates. Brain disease is heart disease of the brain. Brain disease is arthritis of the brain. Brain disease is liver cirrhosis of the brain. Brain disease is the pulmonary embolism of the brain. It's the same diseases all throughout the body. And the reason why I think Parkinson's is so fascinating and important is it be, it's because a poster, it's a poster child for this idea that when we're sick, our body is just breaking down. There's only one disease, MBFA disease. My body is falling apart disease. That's the only chronic degenerative disease there is. And it doesn't matter if your MBFA disease shows up in your brain or your MBFA disease shows up in your nerves or shows up in the bone or shows up anywhere else. It's just the body deteriorating. And why does it deteriorate? Well, that's what we talk about here every day. Problems with fats, nutritional deficiencies, digestive issues, blood sugar issues, lack of oxygen, too much cortisol. We repeat ourselves all the time because it's the same underlying mechanisms for all disease. Whether you call it fibromyalgia, whether you call it Alzheimer's disease, whether you call it lupus, whether you call it psoriasis, whether you call it eczema, it's the body breaking down. Why does the body break down? Because of an inability to handle duress, because of a, an excessive attack on the body's defense system because of nutritional deficiencies and food, uh, toxins in the food and in the water and our crazy 21st century, century lifestyle, which is f designed to flood us with duress. Have you seen the news lately? Why is it that the news always has crappy stuff in it? It's because fear sells. We're encouraged to be in fear at all times. I had a friend of mine when that whole North Korea thing was happening, and she was terrified that we were going to be in a third world war. She's a really smart lady. And she was terrified that we were going to be in a third world war with North Korea, that North Korea was going to start a third world war. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. There is, this stuff's not going to happen. The world's not going to explode, but we're led to believe it is. We're led to believe at every turn the world is about to fall apart, our collective world and our personal world. We're, we're induced to believe that the only way to survive our, our life is to be in constant fear mode everywhere you turn. That's why it's so important. That if something makes you scared or something makes you feel fear, turn it off and learn how to deal with fear. Learn how to deal with stress. Learn how to deal with duress. The body helps us. The body's designed to deal with stress and duress. Don't encourage more stress and help it handle the stress that's there. One of the most important things you could do if you have Parkinson's disease is stop eating the sugar. In fact, reducing your calories. In fact, one of the most important things you could do no matter what your health challenge is, is to reduce your caloric intake. Calories represent stress on the body. Go ketogenic. You got Parkinson's? Go ketogenic. Eat more fat and eat less calories. By the way, the ketogenic diet is a low calorie diet. That's the part we always forget to say. It's low calorie. That means it's a very, it's not low calorie, it's very low calorie. Yes, it's high fat percentage, but very low calorie. For Parkinson's disease, make sure you're using your fatty vitamins. D and E especially, by the way. E is a very important brain vitamin. E is a protective vitamin, protects fats. So 
So it protects brain fats from deterioration. Eat phospholipids if you have Parkinson's disease. Eat eggs if you have Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease. I saw a video, by the way, a cool YouTube video. You can Google it. Uh, Parkinson's and glutathione. Glutathione injections can do wonders for Parkinson's. Glutathione protects fats. It protects lots of things, but especially protects fats. Use NAC. Eat uh, lecithin granules. This is all for Parkinson's or anything else, but specifically for you, Danny. Digestive enzymes, selenium, zinc, vitamin A, magnesium, lots of omega-3s, lots of essential fatty acids. Use your ultimate EFAs. Make sure you're on the Healthy Start Pack. The B vitamins are incredibly, and the electrolytes for that matter, B vitamins and electrolytes, very important. You know, we talk about the fats being important. That's not to say the watery uh, electrolytes and the watery B vitamins and the watery vitamin C are not important. They're extremely important, especially for the brain. Remember, the brain is burning through 25% of the oxygen and nutrients in the body. So when you're deficient, the brain is going to show, it up, show up real quickly. One of the greatest gifts you can give somebody who's got dementia or Parkinson's disease is the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. That's one of the greatest gifts. If you were looking for a present for your, somebody you know in a nursing home or somebody you know with Parkinson's or movement disorders or, or, uh, uh, or uh, uh, any kind of brain health or nerve health issue, make sure they're on a, a nutritional supplement program. Get them on the Healthy Start Pack. The Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Omega-3 Fats and your Ultimate EFAs, Vitamin D and your Osteo FX, and Ultimate Enzymes, and Probiotics. By the way, for Danny, probiotics are very, very important, and digestive health strategies are very, very important for Parkinson's. Look for food allergies as always, or food intolerances is always a good idea. Making sure that your uh, dementia or Parkinson's or, uh, or, or brain disease patient is having regular bowel movements. There's so many ways that we can be healthy, folks. There's so many things that we can do. And the cool thing is to be really healthy and to, uh, if you want to uh, maximize the body's ability to, to deal with duress and to regenerate, doesn't require a doctor. That, to me, is one of the coolest ideas about health and one of the most important things that we talk about on this program. None of this requires a doctor. None of this requires the medical model. None of this requires drugs. By the way, did you read about uh, three new blood pressure drugs that have been taken off the market, or three blood pressure drugs have been taken off the market. They're not new drugs. Uh, three companies were called blood pressure medication. I meant to read this earlier. These are, these are um, one of the most toxic classes of drugs are the, are the blood pressure drugs. These happen to be uh, taken off the market because of contamination. I think it's what's contamination. Let me read here. Uh, yeah, apparently they've uh, found that some of these drugs contain contaminants, but it doesn't matter. Prescription drugs are toxic. That's the way prescription drugs work. I'm telling you that as a pharmacist, but it doesn't matter. Get yourself on a supplement program. Eat less food. Make sure you're practicing deep breathing. Reduce your sugar intake. Use your, your uh, mental and emotional and uh, spiritual strategies. Nobody has to be sick when it comes to chronic long-term health challenges. And that is so inspiring. And that should be the best news you've heard if you're dealing with a chronic long-term degenerative disease. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side, friends. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products, and truth skin health, truthtreatments.com for all the truth skin health products. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We will talk to you all later. Bye for now.